Welcome to Two Out of Three Recommend. I'm Lee. And I'm Brett. We're two brothers out of three getting together to chat and recommend drinks, movies, shows and things to keep you busy. Welcome to another episode of Two Out of Three Brothers, talking about stuff. Stuff and stuff. Hello, Brett. Hello, Lee. How are you? Good. If anybody listens and has another idea for a tagline, other mm. than talking about stuff, yep. let us know. Yeah. Jump yep. into the Two Out of Three Brothers Facebook group and you can tell us there. Yeah. Drinking and talking about stuff. Drinking and thinking. Here's a drink. Here's a think. Minus 196 Suntory. I saw this the other day. I was almost going to buy it, so I'm glad that you have. Yeah, because if it's no good, then it's my money, not yours. That's all right. Add There's it to a the peach in the QR code. Oh, that's cute. All right. It's... Is that a peach or a bum? We've tried the... We've done the lemon one. We've done the lemon Which one. good. Of the 196, and we're now we're going to try the double peach. Cheers. Hmm. Hmm. It. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, that's not some nostalgic PTSD about having a night of too many wet pussy shots when I tasted that. Hopefully, not too nostalgic. <laughs> yeah, when I was eight. Yeah. I remember when I was 13 and watching Super Ted and doing wet pussy shots. <laughs> Um, it's not bad. I prefer the lemon. Uh, yeah, I also haven't tried the grape. So, oh, I didn't um, see the grape at Liquorland. Maybe this is the peaches replace the grape. I don't know. Well, it's it's double peach. It's all right. I no, nah, it's it's almost too sweet or something. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, oh, peach. Oh, yeah. It tastes like regret. No, I'm okay with. I'm okay with it actually. I don't mind it. I wouldn't drink a whole box of them though. Mm, you know, because with the thing like the lemon ones are dangerous because they're really easy to drink and then they don't taste alcoholic. Yeah. Whereas this isn't easy to drink for me. I was almost gonna get to try the hard rated no sugar. Oh, I had hard rated the other day. I do love a hard rated. I had a few the other day, actually. Yeah, we talked about I had a few last weekend, mm. but I had one on Sunday. Oh, okay. Three. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> it tasted different. Out of I a think, can or no, on a tap? No, it was on a tap yep. in a glass with ice and a slice of lemon. You don't need lemon in lemon. No. That's what I thought. Weird. And I had a very odd... Not a very odd, but a slightly odd Parma. Like, okay. it had ham, win. Good. But the Napoli sauce was just too Napoli sauce. What? A, too okay. herby. Too, too herby? Too herby. Not the love bug. Too herbaceous. Hancock? Yeah. <laughs> um, That's a weird reference that... Not many people listening <laughs> might get. Um, too herby. So they, they over oregano did it. Well, I think they just... <laughs> so I try that again. They over oregano it. They heavily herbed it. Okay. If we're doing they were ha- heavy, alliteration. Herby, hand heavy. No. Nah. Heavy handed herbage. Heavy handed herbage. Yep. Jesus. Well, I don't I don't think though if they added... Because you can just buy... Like tins of Napoli sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I think just the one that they bought had too much in terms of herbs. Mm, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, cool. Anyway, I won't name and shame. Okay. How was the Yarraville, the railway hotel? <laughs> I don't know. Um, no. That wasn't it. I'm not saying that. Um, can I talk about something we did last week? Yes. I think we talked about it on the last week's episode. Yeah. We went to Pride Bingo. Oh, yes, we Drag did. Drag Bingo at we Pride. We did, yeah. And yet again... Lee won. You were shit. I was shit. <laughs> I also think at one point I stopped paying attention. And I think it was the last round. The host was just like, 
66, chick with stick, stick, did it, did it, did it, did it, did it. And I'm like, was that a 64? I think I might have won. She <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. She did speed up. Yeah. And, but I still won. And I won $50 cashola. Yep. For the last game. And I was very excited. Yeah. The, the suspense and the build up is good, they do it well. There was also one of the games where about 18 people out of the 20 there yeah. were one number away. That was one of the music and it, rounds. And one of them wasn't me, uh, no. surprisingly. No. So the other guy that di- that um, wasn't close to getting bingo wasn't playing. So I was definitely the worst one there. <laughs> Even the musical bingo. The I, mu- I think the music bingo was fun. Something a bit different. Yeah, I think it was good. Um and the the host, Amanda, mm. is fun. Very funny. We also will forward sell mm. had a little bit space. of a meeting with the CEO about some potential CEO. Okay. two out of three brothers live events. Yep. So stay tuned for that. Follow us on the socials and follow Pride of Our Footscray on the socials to know when we're gonna be there live. We're gonna be there for my birthday, but that's not in a live event sense. But if you want to have a drink there for my birthday, we'll be watching Back up. to the Future there live for Lee's birthday. Oh, that's the tempting. queer classic that is Doc Brown. So we got rid of your kids. Um, that actually wasn't bad. That one. There's no gays in that show, not that we know of. But Biff could be a bully, like closet. B- Biff's Biff's. Um, Biff's yep. bullying could be for a closeted reason. I'm not outing. No, the, isn't Biff the sister a lesbian? Podcast. Or did I just make that up in my mind? Linda, the sister, or the sister in Back to the Future Two that's played by Michael J. Fox. Linda, the sister. She could be. Don't know. She's very jealous of people calling the house for dates. Or she might just be lonely. Anyway. No, she's not because when at the end of the movie when they go back, when Michael J. Fox, Marty McFly goes back, okay. the brother, Dave, I regret bringing up back to the future. says, you got a call from Greg or Craig. Linda, I can't keep up with all your men. Ah. Uh, so she's not a lesbian. She's a slut. Oh, okay. <laughs> not slut shaming. No. Like all power. Yeah, great. In the 80s, especially. Oh, yeah. Um, But no, that line is in there to contrast the fact that in the first iteration, the kids aren't allowed to date. Yep. Yep. Cool. Anyway, rant over. No, that's just trivia. So would you say that Back to the Future is a bit nostalgic? Yes, I would say the Back to the Future is something that I am remembering and remembering and remembering and remembering. You know what I was remembering but didn't need to remember because I did it? Because you still have it. I dusted off the old Nintendo 64 lead. And bought it because you got a T-shirt that has a Nintendo 64 controller. That's actually my controller, the blue one. Oh, yeah. Dean's was grey. Had the clear purple. was clear purple. Yep. Mine had the... Rumble pack in it. Um, Dean said the dodgy buttons. <laughs> the, the joystick was From too being much. Thrown across this the room. on the Pokemon Stadium. Um, look, <laughs> the graphics of a Nintendo sixty four on a bigger TV screen. Yep, not fantastic. Yes. Bit blurry. Sixty four squares. That's why. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but God, it's good. I I really like. That's the biggest... Nintendo hasn't made an impact on... Well, actually, the Wii. The Wii was big because yeah. it was like remotes. I don't think after the Wii, Nintendo's really had an impact on the console world. I think that when it came then to the Switch... Yeah. That um, the PlayStation and Xbox had kind of... Well, the Switch is a bit bit like, how can we make a Game Boy that's also a console? I think the Switch is also a bit for kids. No offense to anybody that's... I have a Switch. Um, (laughs) But, you know, as in, like, you go into EB Games, for example. Yes. And then you look at the games that PlayStation had, and it's all, like, Batman, like, Harry Potter, where you go and kill everyone. Yeah, everybody's covered in blood, blah, sport. 
And then you go to um, the Nintendo Switch, Switch and it's like Lego Batman, Lego Harry yeah. Potter, yeah. Animal Crossing. Super Smash Bros. Yeah, yeah, yeah which yeah. is great. Of course. Um, it's just a different market. What game did you play? I played two. Goldeneye. Goldeneye. Of course. And best, I played the first best, level. I've not played a first person shooter since Goldeneye. Okay. But even people that do. Yeah, it's the best game ever. Are like. Goldeneye set the bar for first-person shooters. Yeah. That still has not quite, in a lot of cases, been met to this day. Yeah. Um, so I played Goldeneye and I did... Because you can't do multiplayer by yourself, which you would think when is obvious. Say, when you say that out loud, it is kind of obvious. Yeah. Um, because in... Perfect Dark. The mid to late 90s when the 64 came around, the yeah. internet didn't exist, really. That's true. Can you imagine trying to... Well, LAN parties existed, but could you imagine trying to connect online to play GoldenEye with someone on the dial-up internet we had in 1999? Oh, that would be great. would have been amazing. <laughs> um, <laughs> would have taken three days for the DK mode James to Bond load. head to load. Um, oh, it was great. Slappers only. Um <laughs> <laughs> it was great. We just talking slapped about people to death. Linda McFly <laughs> like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, I played the first level and I'm yep. like, ah, I remember exactly what to do here. Yeah. You get the gun and then you go and there's one guy up the side and then you have to go and shoot the guy and the thing. And you've got to use your watch to yeah, open something. Yeah, you have to something. watch to open the thing to go yep. down the dam. Oh, yeah. Because it basically, it follows the movie. Yes. Yeah. Except and for then the sex scenes. You have to blow up mines on the sills to kill um, Sean Bean. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Poor Sean Bean. Um, but, yeah, so it's very nostalgic. And then I played Perfect Dark. Oh, yeah, which was the good, the different version of... It's like an aftermarket GoldenEye. But it was good. But remember... It, we, it allows you to do multiplayer yeah, against the computer. But... We also used to play Perfect Dark a lot because Goldeneye, in order to play three players, because as our name suggests, we do have a third brother. In order for us to play three players, you would have had to have gotten an expansion pack to play yeah. Goldeneye three players. But Perfect Dark, Perfect Dark, you could play three players. So the amazing thing is that still on the console and the expansion pack is the um, saved the, game. the saved games. Of, you know, like, because when you played Perfect Dark, you could do the settings. Yeah. So, there's different modes of you have to kill a certain person or you have to king of the hill. Yep. Um, or one I made up that was just every weapon was an explosive of some sort. Oh, okay. Even the laptop gun? Laptop gun. Yep. <laughs> um, which was great. I love that gun. So, every... It- Weapon was like a mine. So there were mines, grenade launchers, super dragon. Um, oh, okay. So you, yeah. yeah. Instead, I thought you meant. I remember it now. But I thought you meant like, even if you had a perfect dark version of the PP seven. Oh no, the Falcon two. It no, yeah. was you could drop it and leave it, and it was a mine that someone would no. step on the gun and it would explode. So you choose that when you create a preset yes, gameplay, yes. The weapons you choose all the weapons. were all blowy up. In Every lives. weapon that you had, other than punching people... Slappers only. ...was um, explosions. Yeah. Great. So, hectic. Soup, the bloody Super Dragon. I love it. That was a great weapon. You know what I loved? What was it, the one... I didn't use it in any of the games I played. It was one where you pressed R... Mm-hmm. And then you could see through the walls. Mm. And it was like Heat Seeker or something. And so you'd just be standing there and you'd die because somebody would shoot you through a wall. Through a wall, yeah. I can't remember what it was called. Phoenix Me neither. something. Yeah, maybe. Phoenix makes sense. Anyway, so that was my nostalgic trip down Nostalgia Lane. Remember Ren and Remember Ren. Did you play HSV Adventure Racing? Get I? <laughs> no, I didn't. I haven't got to that yet. I just did those two. And I haven't yet decided if I want to start a new season from scratch on Ken Griffey Jr. Baseball. Oh, Ken Griffey Jr. Baseball. What a classic. Because in all the times we played, mm. I think middle brother and I played Ken Griffey more than you. Yeah. We would start a season. Yes. And you'd do a full, do a full draft. Yeah. Um, which took ages. Um, and we never finished a season. Well... 
No better time than now when you have a full time job yeah, and exactly. two podcasts. To I could run. have done it any time I had school holidays. <laughs> um, I it was good. HSV Adventure Racing was great mm. because we first got we borrowed Beetle Adventure Racing from the library. Yep. And then we saw HSV Adventure Racing, which yep. for our foreign listeners, HSV is Holden Special Vehicles, yep. which were like the car guy Holdens. Yeah. Holden cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would race these ones, and instead of the normal voice of Beetle Adventure Racing, it would be the Australian one. So when you'd log into the menu, it would go, Yeah, get a Right, oh. And then you'd choose your thing, and I would just drive around with blaring the horn the whole time. Yeah. See right, <laughs> see right, just um, driving around. It's great, uh, great fun. I have the you other no thing, other memory of how the game went. Other oh no, than just toot I don't the horn. remember it being difficult. <laughs> Probably um, not. Something to do with balloons, or was that Mario? Kart? That was Mario Kart Battle. Mm. Battle. That Mario Kart Rainbow Road on sixty four. One of the best Mario Kart tracks. You know, you know what cheats with the new fucking Gen Z Mario Kart on Switch, which right. I also have? Yeah. Um, you can set it so you don't fall off. Well, that's like putting bumpers on the bowling lanes. Yeah. Once you get above eight years old, no, yeah. not allowed. So you can, I think you can set your difficulty. So if you do an easier difficulty, you can't fall off. No. Nah. Even if you're on 150cc. If you're no do 150 c. If you're doing 150 cc, you shouldn't be allowed to do easy because mm, mm. that's the top ranking. Mm. Wah. Wah. That was my Waluigi. And the ghost brings you back on. Yeah. Um, well done, then, Nintendo on the 64. Re- you know what else was mad nostalgia on a school holiday? Mm-hmm. Going to Video Easy or Blockbuster, probably Blockbuster. So yep. w- walking to Blockbuster. And borrowing Pokemon Stadium 2. Yes, I never played it, but you did. And Mario Party on the Nintendo 64. What you could play on your next round of the Mario Mario uh, of the 64 is Tiger Woods Golf that we never returned to the Wyndham oh, City Library. You know what I'm going to keep, though? <laughs> what I'm going to keep? What? The Kobe Bryant NBA, because he's dead now, so it might be worth well, something. Well, it might be worth something. Madden mm. 64 football on there, even though none of us had watched a minute of NFL football. Nah. We needed Madden. <gasps> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, do you remember the one of the maddest and angriest I've ever been at a human being in my life? Was it when... No. When the middle brother mm. took one of the games... And traded it in. Oh, no, I don't remember and this. And it was Churok. I didn't get him. Oh, Churok. I'm an aardvark. And you had to shoot the little bugs. It's like Starship Troopers. Yeah, and you had this like Xena sling blade thing. Oh, yeah, you did. Oh, Xena Warrior Princess. That's nostalgia. That's nostalgia. Ryan Gosling. Okay. Hercules. Ah, oh, the young Hercules. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, he was the homoerotic to Kevin Sorbo. Like that blonde girl was the homoerotic <laughs> okay. to Lucy Lawless. No, wasn't Ryan Gosling the young version of oh, Hercules, he like too. flashback? He yeah, no, they weren't rooting. Okay. Allegedly. I don't think Kevin Sorbo would anyway. No, actually, there's much more chance that Lucy Lawless was homoerotic in with the... Hey, Xena can't fly. I told you, I'm not <laughs> Xena, I'm Lucy Lawless. <laughs> All right, let's not get too bit too deep into the nostalgic TV or we'll have nothing to talk about next week. But what else do we have to talk about now? I watched another couple of episodes of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Okay, any improvements? Uh, well, once you just resign yourself to the fact that it's not anything close to the movie. Yep. Yes. Okay. But I have to tell you, Lee, I went to a trivia last week. As oh, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to tell the listeners because you already told me. First question in yep. the movie round. Yep. In the 2005 film, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, who played Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Will Smith. Yep. And, and Nicole Sandra Kidman. Bullock. And then... That actually would have been a great movie, Will Smith and Sandra Bullock. It would have been time, right. not Yeah, now. yeah, not now. Um, I watched a baseball game last night and there was a player named Will Smith. Ooh, and I'm wondering if his slapper. parents named him... 
We hit two home runs in the game. Oh, gosh. So we sla- can slap. I was wondering if his parents named him after, what would he be now, 20, named him after the 90s Will Smith, which was super cool. Did they have a different... But now they're regretting... Surname. No, no, we could still be Smith, and then they just <laughs> picked Will. That's terrible. <laughs> That's a dumb name. Sorry. But his Will parents Smith, are stupid. Will Smith, Will Smith was probably cool when this guy was born. Yeah, 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 yeah. If you, na- if you decided to name your kid now Will Smith, everyone would be like, he's a fucking douche. Why? Yeah, it's like in the 40s in Germany. There were so many Adolf Hitlers. <laughs> that is such a In stretch. the 30s. In, in the, the 30s. 30s. In the 30s, maybe. Not in the 40s. Okay. Unless they were told they had to name Unless their they children had to Adolf name Hitler. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so that was one question going That's off topic. That's an interesting topic. Uh, Mr. What Mrs. name Smith? can't you name someone now? Donald Trump. Adolf. Adolf. Even I. It's I, like that Happy Endings episode where the guy's name is Doug Hitler. Oh, yeah. And she doesn't want to be Penny Hitler. It's not pronounced Hitler? <laughs> <laughs> you can't. Yeah, you can't name a kid Adolf. Adolf. Oh, Penny. Um, yeah, and then another question in the movie round. Yes. There was a, the last question shows a clip. Of a movie. And is this a movie that we haven't reviewed yet? No. Okay. And it is, you have to name the movie, the year it was released, and the director. Yes, and? And it was a German-Austrian actor screaming at children. I'm like, oh my God, it's Kindergarten Cop. <laughs> so, it popped up straight away and it was just like him about to go, shut up. I'm like, oh, Kindergarten uh, Cop. Yeah. I need it. to go to the bathroom real bad. It was great. <laughs> And then there was some other question. No, that was all that was directly linked. There was a Star Wars question. And we there reviewed was, some Star Wars. There was. And I nerded out and my husband would be proud because the question was, what is Leia's last name? And I named her birth name, her adopted name, and her married name. So her, it, the question was, what, what's her adopted name? Yes. And I went there. I'm like, it's something like Ortega, but it's not. Yeah. Jenna's so I wrote mom. Organza. <laughs> That's closer than Ortega. It's close. It's Organa for those that don't know. Yeah. Good. I made a joke. Good trivia. To the trivia host. Mm. He's a different guy than when we've gone before. Um, but And he was pretty good. And um, he was funny and he would talk around, walk around and talk to people. Um, and he came and was like, oh, are you guys here for trivia? We're like, yeah, we won last time. We're here to spend our money. Um, and he's like. This is how it works, blah, blah, blah. And let me know if you've got any questions. And I went to him and I said, don't you ask the questions? <laughs> and he went, what? Viva asked went, the questions. I'm like, oh, no, come didn't on, quite get mate. It. He didn't quite get it. Could your question be, seeing as you've asked movie questions about my podcast yeah. reviews, <laughs> you can watched- you plug my podcast? Yeah. Can you pl- yeah. Um, if you do want to plug our podcast, share us on the socials, share us with your friends. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Yeah. I've watched two, one and a half more episodes. So I'm up halfway through season three and I fell asleep on the couch and then you arrived. Okay. And it's good. Donald Glover is good. It's funny and not action-y, not like action -action action-y. Yeah. But it's kind of funny drama. Uh, a tip for showrunners. I am not one. Okay. As a disclaimer. Yeah. Other than this show and tutoring cinema. But a tip for showrunners. I'm not a runner. At the end of episode one, it is okay to do a this season on, right? Oh, okay. This was after sure. the credits. Yeah. Right? right. This season on. Mr. Did you give the option Smith. to skip the credits? Uh, yes. Good. Which I should have done because... In the first episode, right, they're fake married. It's the opposite of Brad and And they end up getting together. They're fake married. And there's a bit of tension and we think Donald Glover wants to hook up. Yeah. But Mrs. Smith doesn't. Okay. You still haven't learned her name. The third clip, Jane, the third clip in this this season on Mr. and Mrs. Smith is them rooting. Oh, piss off. No tension. Tension gone. And fair enough, they root about bad. They root about ten minutes into episode two, but still, I love that it's like 
Yeah, if imagine if you did that on another show. That's stupid. This yeah. season on Game of Thrones, this guy dies. This season on Friends, she gets off the plane. What? Well, she shouldn't have, but anyway. <laughs> Let's not, not get open into, that can of worms. Not going to get into that rant. Yeah. Anyway, Mr. and Mrs. Smith is pretty good. If you watch it not expecting a serialized version of Brad and Angelina. Okay. Okay. Great. Anything else you've watched this week that you might recommend for people? Did I talk about Baby Reindeer already? I did. Yeah. I watched three or four episodes mm, of it. Mm, she mm. is very good. She's very good. It, the series for me is going downhill. Yeah. I I think he's strung along the for too long. Why aren't you going to the cops? Yep. When she was sitting outside on the bus stop for five days straight. That's a call the cops when moment. She nearly killed a woman. Yeah. Go to the cops. When, anyway, that's a spoiler. Do you know also uh what's terrible in the show? His acting. Anybody working in security. Yep. Because there's that scene where he does the stand up and she loses her mind. Yeah. And it's not until he's spoiler. he says mm. come in security. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if someone Almost flips a table. I don't have never run the venue again, but we know people that have worked security. Yeah. If someone almost flips a table, that's when I'm coming in. I'm not waiting until the host of the night says, they could have thought it was security, like please? crowd involvement. Yeah, well, that's the only way apparently comedians get noticed on TikTok. Yeah. Is through crowd work, which is why that's half of what I see in my TikTok feed in between the thirst traps. Yeah, so it's interesting for me. I it's kind of losing its steam for me. And then there was one episode where people were like, "Oh, it's really fucked up." I'm like, "It's just fucked up for the sake of being fucked up. I really don't get what this has to do anything with anything." Yeah, anyway, I'm it might have a payoff in the I'm end. I'm halfway through and it could have been less than 8. I'm I'm only watched 4, but I feel yeah. already that it could have been less yeah. than 8 episodes. But I'll watch it till the end. I will. I'm still well. loving Abbott Elementary. Yep. And Mr. and Mrs. Smith is the other thing I've watched. Oh, actually, I want to come back to something I talked about a few weeks ago, The mm-hmm. Lazarus Project. Mm-hmm. Um, if you have, if you are yet to start or if you have started and are not enjoying it, started it on my recommendation, I'm going to apologize. I don't recall this at all. So, The Lazarus Project is a British show about... They happened to find these people who... Oh, no, they made this, like, time machine that can time loop back a certain amount of time. So, it's not time travel. Okay. What are you thinking? It's not- no, I'm just trying to think. I have no memory of you talking about so, this before. The, La- the Lazarus Project, right, in the premise in the show, is a project that when there are extinction-level events, yeah. they can go back to before the event happened and stop the event from happening to save the human race from extinction. It's not time oh, travel. God. They just go back and make a time loop and then they relive that time. Sounds dumb. Well, they did it well in the first episode and it kind of got me hooked. And okay. they, the agents are either people that sign up or people that naturally remember the first occurrence of the timeline. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this guy naturally can remember and he awakens to this when there's a time loop. So he becomes an agent, right? And then shit happens. Two singularities, which doesn't make sense, hit each other. And the universe ends, not just the human race. Mm. So they have to keep going back. But it is getting stupid to the point where they travel back in time, right? And you know I don't like clunky exposition, if you've listened to any Tooting Cinema episodes. They go back on time, right? And coming back to Back to the Future, what makes Marty get stuck there is... Something legitimate, like he got attacked by terrorists, so he didn't have time to put more plutonium in the thing, right? So he ran out of fuel, so can't yeah. run the time circuits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he's stuck there because nothing except a bolt of lightning can make 1.21 gigawatts of electricity in yeah. 1955. That's all written into the movie. Yes. The reason they can't time travel in the 
last episode I watched, and it will be the last episode I ever watch, is because, quote, from the scientist, the nuclear physicist time travel scientist, Mm -hmm. quote, we can't go back because the machine has malfunctioned. Yeah. Full stop. That's it? Yep. In what way? Don't know. Okay. Does he know? I don't know. So it's got to be done your kids' money. The machine has malfunctioned. It's your daughter. She marries a black guy. Um, yeah, okay. Dumb. That That's just one indication of the somewhat laziness of the show, so I'm not going to watch it. Okay. I am going to watch The Three-Body Problem, though. Great. I'm and going to watch Dead Boy Detectives. Probably read the book. And I definitely am actually looking forward to Deadpool 3. Great. I want to go see three some tennis movie challenges. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. Zendaya. Mm. Oh, you know today that was the Met Gala. Oh, yes. Okay. Jesus. I didn't understand the theme. I'm going to go with it, all right? Now they have a theme. Does anyone? And it was Sleeping Beauties Reawakening Fashion something, and there was some garden theme. Okay. So everybody just wore fucking flowers, basically. Mm -hmm. Men. This is a message to you men, right? Yeah. Any men listening that may go to the Met Gala. Yeah. Matt Damon, if you're listening. Um, It's the Met Gala. Yeah. You don't just wear a tuxedo, all right? Yeah. Like, this is your time to, like, try something new. Chris Hemsworth, Mm. who was one of the co-chairs of the Met Gala this year, Mm. don't just wear your same old shtick. Just don't wear just three piece suit with your fucking shirt unbuttoned halfway down your thing. That's yeah, not a statement. You look great. Where's the theme? It's not like the Oscars where the women wear whatever they want, but the men have to wear black tie. Yeah. So my best dress is to any guy that didn't just wear a fucking black suit or a plain suit. No, my, be- my best dress is um, Mindy Kaling. Oh, really? Mm. Mm. I haven't seen everything, but that's the best one I've seen. One of my favorite things about Mindy Kaling is when it was announced that she was going to play Velma in the new Scooby-Doo spin-off that's focused on Velma. Yeah, she yeah, was going to yeah. voice in the cartoon. Yeah. Um, and people, she shared the tweet or it was announced or something, and then someone replied with the gif of Michael Scott screaming, no, 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 no. <laughs> and then she replied to that gif I wrote saying, that. I wrote the yeah. episode this gif is from. <laughs> She's had a decent glow up from being Kelly in The Office. Yeah. You should see this thing that she wore. I'll and show that you show we watched. The Mindy Project. The Mindy Project. Yeah. yeah. How Her could show. I forget the name? Um, and she's there was also Zendaya a... looked it, ridiculous. She's also a part of this little sketch thing of like brown people support desk. And it's quite funny. Like there's Okay. On that famous... funny or die, something like that. No, that it's on their own thing. Oh, okay. But there's like famous... For the listeners, I'm putting brown in quotation marks. That's the word they're using, yep. and that's what they're calling it. And it's things like, you know, my girlfriend has invited me to her cousin's wedding, and the, the invitation says there's four events. Is this right? And then someone's like, oh, no, that's actually wrong. It should be 14 events. And so it's famous brown people okay. like Cal Penn and Jay Shetty um, and a couple other people, and one of the Jokes. When, do you, when are you going to name a famous person? Well, one of the jokes is that Mindy Kaling's shift is next. They, you know, someone comes in looking for a successful brown woman. Oh, and there's okay. Someone there who is a comedian. Yeah. But then um, they say, "Oh, Mindy Kaling's shift starts soon." They are, if you saw the sketch, you would know the faces of the support okay. people. Okay. Great. Yeah. Cool. There's one though where the guy comes in and goes, "Oh, I just my girlfriend's angry at me because I don't." I'm not trying to understand her culture. And the service desk person goes, where's she from? And he goes, oh, I'm pretty sure it's Agrabah. Oh, <laughs> he's like, <laughs> it's not Agrabah. And he's like, yeah, yeah, she said Agrabah. And they're like, definitely not <laughs> Agrabah. Ah, that's really funny. <laughs> and then he's like, he names these other places. And one of the other places he names is El Barbwa, which is where Prince Ali is Ali from, Barbwa. allegedly. Um, anyway, that's... A tangent. Something else to watch this week is Dream Girls, oh, we because dream we girls. are reviewing that for to drink cinema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not looking forward to Jamie Fox. I'm looking forward to see if we were just particularly harsh on him. 
Yeah, okay. Beyonce's good. Jay Hud's good. Yeah. And Nick and Only Rose is good. And Nick and Only Rose is good. End of the Danny story. Danny Glover? Danny Glover. Good. Good. Song's good. Song's good. The two white guys in it. Okay. Yeah. I'm guessing two. Maybe we should change one of our awards from best extra to best white guy. <laughs> we'll rename it the best white guy. Award. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for listening to another episode of Two Out of Three Brothers. If you've got another slogan for us, get in the Facebook group and let us know. Like and subscribe on the YouTube. Subscribe to this channel and check out the Two Drink Cinema feed as well on the podcast apps. This week we are reviewing Dream Girls. Uh, so get on to that. Thank you, Brett. Thanks, Lee. Thanks for listening to Two Out of Three Recommend. We would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast was produced and pay our respects to Elders past and present. If you'd like to support the podcast and become a member, gaining early access to episodes and an exclusive episode each month, sign up as a member using the link in the show notes. If there's something you'd like to recommend to us, get in touch on the socials or in our Facebook group. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast on your podcast app or on YouTube. Leave us a rating and review and tell your friends.